We're live! We're live. Okay, everybody, welcome to, uh, to the House of Blood. My name's Rob. I guess you know because you're uh, watching, watching us. Um, so, we are all in a terrible situation. We're all grounded at home. Uh, we had to close down the old school, uh, which, which, which really hurts. But as you can imagine, because I know a lot of my friends are out there, a lot of barbers, a lot of, a lot of hairdressers. Um, yeah, well, we have to do this all together. Normally on Thursday, I do a demo at the old school academy. So I thought it might be fun to show you a haircut. Now this is gonna be very special because I literally never cut a mannequin before. Now normally when I do my demo, I talk a lot about, about my way of thinking with hair and angles and everything, but you know, life it's a little bit different. So I'm just gonna go straight into the haircut. I have absolutely no idea what's gonna to happen today because I've never cut one before. So I'm just gonna try, if you wanna laugh, laugh i'm totally fine with that now normally my whole way of working our way of working at both scorum and the old school academy is that we work with a natural fall and implant of the hair we like to believe that every client has that one unique dna stem that makes every hair different now of course a mannequin does not have a lot of natural fall so basically what i'm going to do is i'm just going to show you what i would do on normal hair and just hope that mr dick here mr dick johnson say hello to the people oi people it's dick johnson <laughs> <laughs> yeah big thumb ups to uh to boot who is the boyfriend of my daughter who is living here in my house and who has been the voice of Mr. Dick Johnson for the last couple of days. Now, if you start a haircut, you gotta see it like a pizza, you know? I mean, you're super hungry and you order the pizza, they bring it to the door, the, they bring it in the box, and I mean, you're, you're, you're really, really hungry and the pizza smells so, so, so good. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. You can open the box and just take out the pizza and just start eating away somewhere, which, which is actually pretty nice, but you know, it's always easier to divide the pizza in little pieces. And that is what we like to call our sectioning and partings. Now, if you got m multiple panels, it's easier to know where to start the haircut. So the funny thing is, the, the thing that gives the haircut um, the most personality is usually the hair on top, right? That's where all the cool shit's going on. It's not really fair because karma makes that, that actually the part is, that's the most important is the part that some of us lose the fastest. Now, how are we gonna divide that hair? We're gonna, Start on the parietal ridge. There's a lot of tricks. Normally people have that temple area. I have to say that on Mr. Dick here, it's not very clear what a temple area is, but I usually follow the natural hairline, right? So what I'm gonna do is, see, using my body, and I'm gonna, oh my God, what a horrible implant. See, I'm gonna divide the hair and I'm gonna save all that hair on top till later. Normally my clients are in a chair and don't have three legs. Um, so what we got here, <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend and my daughter are downstairs. We're at home guys, so if you hear a little bit of a, a giggling, it's the ladies. Yes, no. So we're gonna save all this till later. Now, when you do like a pompadour or a slick back, the thing is, you know, when you look at a person, when you put a photo on Tinder or Grindr or whatever grinds your gears, yeah, this is what you see. So I normally take out a triangle right in the front here, yeah, because that is where my pompadour is gonna be. So I'm gonna save that hair till later too. My whole way of working is always based upon this 
I never want to cut hair too short. You can only cut hair too short. You can never leave it too long. See, that's why I don't like to start my face around the perimeter because hair that's gone is gone, right? Now, I want to go for a bit of a classic look. Yeah, so I like to keep a little bit of hair to flow backwards right here. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is like that pizza, I'm going to take out this part here in the front, right? And I'm going to save that till later too, because I don't really know what's going to happen. Yeah, so I can screw up here. Nobody's going to see that on your Tinder profile. Yeah, and I'm going to connect all that hair that's important later to that area right over there. Now, see, there is a lot of tricks that I want to show you, but you know, it's a life, it's a life thing. So I cannot tell you everything. What I do know is, right, within haircuts, the most important thing are angles. Angles of your comb, angles of your fingers, they are gonna determine the shape of the haircut. So make sure that even before you start the haircut, the haircut's already in your head. So I want length on the sides, I want a little bit, a little bit of length in the front. I wanna go shorter in the nape area, yes? If you would take a normal section, right, like this, boom. And I would set in a guideline, yeah? It is the shape of my fingers that are gonna determine the shape of the haircut, right? Everybody that knows a little bit about hair, and I'm guessing you all do, understands what the shape of this is gonna do, right? Now I'm gonna show you a little thing. My fingers always point, the tip of my fingers always point to the length on top. Well, this part of my knuckles always point to the hair in the nape area, yeah? So remembering that, yeah, nothing really changes when you do a taper. So instead of going all the way around between my fingers, I kind of want to switch to clipper work. Now, I want to keep this length right there because I want it to go back, right? But all the hair under there doesn't really matter. So what I'm going to do here, and I really hope these clippers are going to work on this hair. Again, I've never done this, so let's see what happens, yeah? I'm going to take all this hair here, right? I'm going to comb it up and up, yeah, and I'm going to set in a baseline. Baseline, step. baseline. So by doing this, yeah, lifting all that hair up, you can imagine that this hair here is going to be shorter than the hair over there, right? So I always have hair left to play with. But when I check my length, because I've lifted it all up, see, you can tell that the hair on the parietal ridge is nice on length exactly behind the ear. Yeah, this gives me a lot of information. Because that means that I don't have to worry about that length on the parietal ridge anymore. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna repeat that process. Yeah, so this was my first one, up. Yeah, but now going slightly down, looking for that previous cut length, previous cut length. Yes, I'm gonna, oh, the, yeah, up. Baseline, baseline. Okay. Now, all of a sudden, see if I'm gonna check my length. 
you will see that I pretty much did exactly the same thing as I would have done between my fingers. Yeah? So that is a very fast way of setting in those first lines. Yes? Now normally, what you got here is your occipital bone. Occipital the bone. Okay. See, for everybody that used to ride a skateboard, if you would go on a jump ramp, yeah, what does a jump ramp does do this transition? It's gonna uh, uh, catapult you out of the jump ramp. That occipital bone pretty much does the same thing, yeah. So that means that going from the nape to the occipital bone. That is a certain shape, which you can follow. See the length? Length. 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 It's actually not too bad on the mannequin. He's working with me here. Do we all see what happened here? Yeah, that is a very fast way of removing a lot of bulk. Yeah, I'm just trying to set in a basic shape here. So I'm not flipping on the guard and start fading away. No, I want to have enough hair to play with later. Yeah, what is very important throughout your haircut though is your body position. Yes, the only thing you gotta know is where your body is in the haircut. See, up. Uh, how does this work? Come on, Dick, get it up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, come on, it's the first time. Give me some slack here. I hope you guys are, are enjoying this. This is very new to me too, okay? But you see what I'm doing here, right? The shape of the, the angle of the comb is doing all the work for you. Yes, but you can already see that that basic shape, yeah, that is a very fast way of removing a lot of bulk. No. If you want to check these lines, you'll see, yeah, one, two, you can check it, you can double check the other way, you can cross check. See, I'm very secure about what I'm doing here, yeah? So this would be your perfect base for that classic pompadour haircut. Now for all the people out there that are like, oh, but I wanna do skin fade. Hey, but that's fine. Because now once that line is set in, once the hair is dry, if you wanna skin fade this all up, be my guest. You can do whatever you want, right? So I don't have to worry about this whole part anymore. We're gonna taper in later, but it doesn't really matter. We got all the good stuff done here, yeah? So the only thing I have to do now, see, because I have that part right over there, you know, we want to blend this in. Yes? Um, maybe if we take the camera, you can, you can see, you, we all want to, we want to blend this into that nape area, yeah? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to lift all that hair up. Yeah, just like I did in the back. And I'm gonna look for the previous cut line right over there. Can we all see that? And I'm gonna connect to that line. One. And two. Yeah, check.
Check. Yes. See, so you got that nice blend into that nape area. Yeah? Once that line is set in, now it is a little bit weird not working on human hair and the human shape of the skull, but the movements are pretty much the same, right? So we get a lot of... See, that's your base. Are we doing good here? Everybody liking it? Yeah, for the end, look. No, it doesn't matter. Yeah. For me, this is the most important part. See, it's about the shape of the haircut. Once it's dry. If you want to fade this all the way, be my guest, right? It doesn't really matter. This part of the haircut, that is the most important. How the hair is going to transition from the sides into the hair on top, right? Okay, so we've set in that base. We got all that nice length to play with later. So we're going to move into our next section. I'm going pretty fast, right? Fuck you, Yella. I'm going pretty fast. <laughs> so, I'm going to divide the hair on top where the ear is attached to the head. Which basically is the widest point of the skull, which is going to bring me to the highest point of the skull. Right? So, I'm going to take a triangle exactly on that highest point. Yeah? So what I got here is another tri one triangle, another triangle, yes? And within that triangle, I'm gonna take a section about as wide as my comb. Yes? Now, I wanna keep my haircut quite long and quite heavy. With a little luck, Dick here is gonna have enough hair left to maybe, if you guys are liking what you see so far, do another live demo in a couple of days, yeah? So, again, body position. It's all about your body position. I'm gonna position my body right behind that parting, yes? And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take all that hair and I'm gonna over direct that hair and I'm gonna connect that hair to the previous cut baseline right there. See? Guideline over direct. Now by over directing all that hair, what you're gonna get is a nice graduation into that nape area. Yeah, a lot of weight. It's kind of hard to see because it's obviously a mannequin. Normally in normal hair, you will get this super nice flow into that nape area, right? So you're really working with the weight and you're not gonna lose too much length want to keep because you want to keep the haircut square and natural yes i'm going to repeat that process so i'm going to take another section about as wide as my comb oh dick is getting great oh dick is getting bold <laughs> you got a bold dick Again, position your body 
A good haircut is all about knowing, you see how relaxed I am? I know exactly what to do within my haircut. Now, I'm a terrible dancer, but my sister, she is a uh, instructor, a teacher, and she always told me a good dancer always knows where his or her body is, right? And, and, and that is without thinking. When you're doing haircuts for a long time, it's gonna be the same. But the moment you're relaxed, you are not putting weight or tension on your muscles, right? Because you gotta keep in the flow of that haircut. Very, very important. So I'm gonna stand right here at my section, taking all that hair from the parting. Yeah, and what I'm doing here is, let me see, what I'm doing is this. I'm really putting my comb in that parting, right? And I move my body to where I want to cut the hair. Yeah, so there we got our guideline. Over direct. that way we get this super nice transition graduation into that nape area almost like cutting the original firefly yeah because you pull that way you're gonna get graduation into the nape area very nice way to keep a lot of length and way to create that DA that ducks R's in the back yeah okay you're gonna repeat that process normally no hair is going to come off because of the last time your client has been to the barber shop well dick hasn't been there for a while obviously yeah okay really rob is it that easy it is that easy everybody see length length all flowing into the back so I took care of that whole side and nape area, yeah? A lot of shit to fix, but hey, there's hair left. And hair that's left is always fixable. The only thing you cannot change is hair that's gone. So if you start fading away, hey, that's all good. We can never know what's gonna happen on that parietal ridge. So I kinda wanna secure that transition from the hair on the sides into the hair on top. On that parietal ridge so later i kind of decide like oh i'm gonna go for a fade or i'm gonna uh, keep a nice uh, taper i just really don't know now remember that i took out that hair in the front here that 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 triangle in the front because that's really where my pompadour is going to be yes so what i got now can you guys see that it's just that little triangle right there yeah very small little triangle but I believe that this might just be the most important one of the haircut except for the one in the front because that is the thing you're gonna see when you look somebody in the face that that might be the most important one that is gonna be the face of the haircut but this little triangle here is gonna determine determine oh the squareness of the cut Yes, we want to keep this heavy, yeah, because we want the pompadour to be really nice and full. So I'm going to take a section within that little triangle, yes. Now, because I cut the rest before, I'm going to have a perfect guide to follow. See? One. Two. it slightly back to keep a lot of length and weight and connect yeah 
Yeah? Another section within that little triangle. And basically repeat that process. So follow your guide. you can always check yourself horizontally 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 what's going on guys problems with the sound but don't know what to do about it oh shit they're not hearing what I'm saying mm, mute it once in a while okay well sorry about that it's you know, it's just from the house. Now, when I when I when I told uh, Yella and Wood and everybody that I wanted to do a live uh, demo, see, I am not trying to teach you the perfect way to do a haircut or the only way or the fastest way. Not even close. For me, at this point, it's really important, you know, I mean, the world, the world, I, I don't think the world has been as crazy as it is right now. It's affecting the whole world, and I don't know about you guys, but I've been home for a week, like, within these walls, and I think that's really important, man, you know, flatten the curve, we got our clients, please don't do house calls stay inside it's the only way to fight this and trust me there's a lot of shit going on so i just kind of want to entertain you and i i know but the, the most beautiful thing about this is you're not in the boring class you can just turn off your phone so um i just hope that maybe somebody's going to be like oh man i can use that little tip or trick yeah because well we gotta keep ourselves entertained and we gotta think about the future i mean uh I don't know about you people, but I'm scared of shit sometimes, man. But staying busy, I think that is the best cure for everything that's happening right now. Um, I mean, I've been playing a lot of uh, Mario Kart. Yeah. What else? What have you been doing, Yella? Working. Working. Well, I'm working right now. <laughs> um, see, we got... Another section within that uh, triangle in the front, right? So what I'm going to do is here. Yeah. See, I'm going to look at that baseline right over there. Yeah. Now I want to keep length to do my pompadour width. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start close to the face, see, building a lot of length and weight, yeah, step one, I want to thank my daughter, Puck, for enjoying herself drawing all the tattoos on Dick here, losing a lot of pain, yeah, I'm going to lift that section, lift, and again, you see where my body is? I move with my sectioning. Does it sound better now? Yeah. Yeah? Cool. Yeah, and that way, all this hair is gonna be connected to that side area, yeah? So, Section. It's going to take another section within the triangle. I got to tell you, working on normal human hair is so much easier. I find it really hard to not see the natural fold because normally when you work with these length, it is the wave of the hair, the implant of the hair that tells you to go shorter or, or um, kind of uh, improvise on your shape. 
it's really hard to let hair here. I mean, what is this doing? Normally that's going flat and everything, but I trust by following my lines, the end result is going to be a super nice long trim pompadour. Lift. Lift. See, knowing where your body position is. There we go. Yes, and all of a sudden, you can see the shape of that haircut all blending nicely together. Yeah? Thanks for wearing pants. What? Thanks for wearing pants. Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> I'm that guy. You know, I always, I didn't want to shock all of you. Well, well, I'm in the house and I've been painting today. And I'm feeling very relaxed. So I was like, am I going to dress up in a suit? And I thought, no, that's going to be ridiculous. I don't wear suits at home. I'm not Duncan. Who actually wears suits when he mows the lawn so yeah any of our friends online already who's there the barbers who's there i saw guy i saw lawrence i saw simon nice. i hope everybody is doing good man it is um it is really weird being at home i mean I think I'm speaking for everybody. We all know how much time and effort we put in building our shops, how much love and time and energy we put in all those clients. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough, but what I do love is that right now, I see so many people trying to do things to keep everything alive, man. So my 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 message is definitely keep supporting your local businesses, man. Keep supporting your local barber shops. Yeah, I mean you're even supporting them just by thinking about them. Yeah, I mean your 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 hair keeps growing and trust me we are ready for all of you guys so when you come in looking like Hagrid I promise you guys that we will take care of you the moment this whole situation is behind us okay dry not licht doen met die pop so while I'm working uh, feel free to take a little look around. There's a lot of artwork by uh, Michiel. All of our t-shirts that he designed for us. There is that absolutely ridiculous shirt from uh, the Anna Wintour. I really, I mean, this is like my office. I like to call it, but not that I... Uh, ever use an office, right? But I do really like to sit in this little area. You can see uh, Pila, the horse, you know? I mean, I'm, I, I, I really, really want to write that book I've been uh, talking about for so long. So, to get inspired, I usually sit in this area of the house. See, repeating the process on the other side. Yeah, that is a very fast way of setting in a beautiful shape. Normally, a normal hair is a little bit better, but honestly, 
it's not it's not that bad with the mannequin right you can see the shape you merge here it's 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 especially a fast way especially when somebody comes in with super long outgrown hair this is a fast way to remove bulk set in a basic shape that we're going to perfect and refine the moment the hair is dry yes it's a couple of steps now i know that 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 you might go like oh but um i can do this way faster you are taking all these detours yeah i'm not even going to deny that but for me it's very important that you stay in control throughout the haircut so whatever technique you're using it's probably I mean, I, I will never put the work of another barber or hairdresser down, ever, you know? There are a lot of ways that lead to Rome. But um, I do, however, believe, I fully, strongly believe, that although there is a lot of ways to Rome, the fastest road is not always the road you should pick, because the scenery is so beautiful. You gotta enjoy that, right? And I think that while you're taking all these roles, that, that, that is your learning process, man. So if you're gonna be like, oh, oh, what he's talking about is not gonna work, I would do it completely different, but only if you take out this little, little piece of information that might spark an idea in your head because that is what education is, for me is all about. It's not just about answering questions, it's about raising new questions. Questions in yourself, right? Like, oh, why have I been doing it like this for so long? Yeah, I will never forget, I will never forget. I mean, I've been doing uh, hair, maybe I should stand more like this, yeah, right? I remember when I started um, uh, doing haircuts, uh, well, I practiced on friends of mine, and I kind of got the name. I was uh, kicked out of high school. Some of you might might have heard the story. And um, back then, you guys probably know that I really loved doing them psychobilly quips. Now, when I started doing hair, and I'm talking, I, this is, I was 14, so that is about... Uh, 30 years ago, oh my god. And um, psych billies back then, they had quips, man. I mean, nowadays it's more like this, the, the flat top uh, cycle quips, but back then people had quips like this, right? And I was always like, how in the hell are they putting up the hair, right? How in the hell can they make that those, those quips that high, you know? I mean, Cycle quiz, yeah, perfectly shaped. So I was always like, okay, you get back home and then you get to put it up, put it up. And then I found out I was thinking completely wrong because when I first saw somebody do their own hair, what did they do? They back combed it, yeah, but they put a mirror on the floor and they didn't put it up. They put <laughs> This is really funny to see the boys with the camera. They, they put it down, right? So gravity was doing the work. So instead, they were just working like this. The mirror was here, using a lot of hairspray. And I was like, duh. But it never came to mind. Sometimes it's the little, and that, that little trick, you know, showed me, it really opened my eyes to a lot of other techniques. So. What I'm trying to say here is, use your own technique, but think about it, right? Be open. I mean, um, Lane and myself, we fully realize that we are two of the luckiest mother in the world because we get to travel so much. And the most beautiful thing about traveling is, see, we go to Japan, we go to Brazil, we go to Australia, yeah, and we have met so many amazing people. 
around the world. And we have met so many absolutely insane barbers and hairdressers. Yeah? And I have seen so many tricks that people use. And you know what I do? I steal a little bit from everybody. Yeah? And I will put it in that one big bucket, stir it around. And my signature way of working comes out. Yeah, I have a guy working in my shop, um, Jason Milky on Instagram. He does fades. Pfft, insane, insane. I can do it like him. So I just love to watch and learn. But I'm not afraid to ask like, oh, how did you do that? Yeah, it's very important because, well, you know, I've never been a fading king. And I'm, I'm like super honest about that. I really love this longer stuff. Yeah, but the thing is, once you know how to set in this strong base, yeah, let's say you can do a beautiful fade, like perfect fade, right up to there. Yeah, way a hundred times better than I do it or whatever, right? But this is then you got to understand how you're going to connect that perfect fade to the hair on top, right? And that's where your little tricks that you might pick up from these longer cuts can come work for you. Okay, so I'm continuing connecting that little square triangle. Okay, and then we got this last one right over here that I talked about you before. See? One section about as wide as my comb. Does it sound okay now? Sound okay? Huh? No response yet. No response? No. Huh? Nee, het geluid goed is in die filmpjes. Okay, I'm gonna remove a little bit of length on top. Yeah, so I'm gonna set in my first line. Jij toch ook? Huh? Jij toch ook? <laughs> ja, dan zie ik niks. Huh? Dan zie ik niks. Moet je even naar het licht toe draaien. Ja. Like this? Yes. Section through the middle. 
Now I like to use a little bit of point cutting, but not too much, just a little to make it flow through a little bit more, especially now that I don't really know how the hair is gonna react. The moment it's dry, Take all the hair from the sides. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be afraid to take big panels of hair because you gotta realize that all of this has already been cut. Yeah, so you all pull it to the middle. So you're gonna create a bit of a concave. So slightly shorter in the middle, slightly longer to the sides. To keep that haircut nice and square. Okay, so this should be the basic shape of the cut, right? We have removed a lot of bulk. There's a lot of hair on the floor here. Oof. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna dry the hair. For me, this is the most important part of the haircut because you know, following a line in wet hair, that's actually pretty easy. Once you know how to cut up the pizza, yeah, it's all, well, you know, it's not really rocket science. I mean, cutting hair isn't really rocket science, but I find it so interesting. I mean, I've been doing it for 30 years and I'm still finding out so much. Now, I have absolutely no idea how the hair is gonna react to what I think is the best product we ever made, the grooming tonic. But again, never used it on a mannequin, so let's not take too much. We might add a little bit later on. I also have the grooming tonic and spray version. brush you want the hot air to be able to go through your brush because when you dry it's oh. Hard. oh that's gonna be terrible when you're watching this right okay I'm not gonna what once I put on the blow dryer um, the sound is probably gonna be horrible so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow the lines of the haircut dry it quite loosely normally with with like a client yeah this is really where it kind of fan the hair to i want i want my client to be able to restyle his hair the next day for me that is the most important thing if you give a client a haircut he cannot recreate you gave him a shitty haircut end of story Right? The easier the haircut is going to be for your client to recreate, the bigger the chance that he's going to come back to your shop saying, oh my God, that was the easiest haircut. People do not always just look for the best haircut. Easy is a very, very important word, especially for your male clients, right? So if the shape of the haircut is going to do the work, he's going to trust your product. I might come back to that, but um, I'm going to dry it. Doe je warm of koud of medium de hitte? 
when I when I when I work on a human being, I will usually go for medium heat or full heat. If I do full heat, I stay a little bit farther away from my client though. But I find it really important that I move my blow dryer really fast. So the the high heat is going to be an issue when you're going to be like too close to the to the skin, right? But the moment you are loosely drying it, you can put it to a high heat. The moment you get you get closer, I go back to to my medium. So this is all full heat, just like taking most of the dampness out. The moment you're going to do a little bit more precise work, that is when you want to go to your medium heat. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Dick, stay put. Nou, het valt weer mee hoor, met die golf, hè? So honestly, I was kind of scared to, uh, to cut mannequin here. I've never done it before. It is, um, I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not easy. Because especially with that weird hair here on the sides, but honestly, it's actually not that bad. It's fun. Now, if you're having fun today and you're going to give me a lot of hearts and a lot of thumbs up and stuff, wood to here. Can we have a shot of wood? <laughs> I mean, he is, uh, of course, uh, my daughter's boyfriend. His hair is growing out. So I was like, you know what, he's in quarantine with me. I might just do a haircut on him. But um, we're just gonna wait and see if you guys like this little live demo. Okay, you can tell that this is actually already starting to look pretty nice. See, a very nice flow into that hair, into the nape area. Yeah, see, nice. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, uh, what's the what's the English word? What? Yeah, verdeling. Het het gewicht is mooi verdeeld. Divided. It's evenly spread, nice evenly spread bulk and weight. I don't know. <laughs> Fuck this. I'm gonna go back to the. Watch the swear words, bro. Ah. Not so many swear words. Je vloekt nogal. Wat? Je vloekt nogal. Really? <laughs> nee. No. Well, I've been watching my words. Is somebody complaining about nee, my nee, nee. words? 
See, first you set in, you dry the shape of the, of the haircut. The moment you loosely dry the hair, um, that's, when we're gonna, that's when we're gonna do a little bit more detailing. So I'm gonna set my dryer to medium, and then I can give it just a little bit more volume. See, heat, cool down. Goed daar beneden, meisjes. Ik hoop dat je kunt zien dat we al een heel mooi nice basic shape hebben. Ik voel dat je een beetje careful moet zijn om niet te veel te maken of the uh, grooming tonic because it's not like like your normal hair but the grooming tonic did just enough now at this point yeah up till here the tricks that I gave you are gonna work on every haircut right so up till here this is just a trick stand here do that, pull the hair there, and this is what you're gonna end up with. But at this point, now, you can turn the haircut into your own personal signature pompadour. So, if you are really into fading, Right at this point, if you want to do your skin fade, do your skin fade. What? Oh shit. Then you have to go offline and go back on, right? We're almost out. Of, is, is it already an hour? Yeah. No way. Oh, I thought we were doing, we, we were going really fast. <laughs> we were not going fast? <laughs> we were. Huh? <laughs> what? What? Is everybody laughing now? <laughs> yeah. See? <laughs> this, really? <laughs> Is it really an hour? Oh man. But it's a good hour. Well, what? 10 seconds left on a live video. Oh, okay. Then we'll air again. 
Ja, dan kun je het zo weer live gaan. Ja. Yeah. See, you're just gonna kind of follow your line screw. Because at this point, the haircut will tell you what to do. See? So I'm just kind of following. I set in that basic shape. In wet hair. And right now I'm using all these different techniques to really kind of put my signature on the rig. Right? So if you want to go for a super short nape area, taper that whole thing in there, be my guest. You can literally do whatever you want. Whatever you like, because it's your haircut right now. Now, I have absolutely no idea if you can taper a mannequin. There is a lot of cartilage here in uh, Dick's ear. Oh. See, follow the shape of the top. So, how am I doing here on my first uh, mannequin? Everybody uh, happy? <laughs> A badass cut. Badass cut. Good. Keep the compliments coming, please, because I'm really insecure about this one. This is so weird. How is Dick feeling? Huh? How is Dick feeling? Dick is, uh, I don't know. Dick! I'm feeling alright. My hair is really looking good. I would like to watch in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 60 minutes, haven't seen myself. <laughs> uh. See, I mean, I don't really normally, this is so different. Normally you can see what you're doing, but well, it's looking. Looking pretty nice, right? Well, we're gonna continue uh, the haircut. I don't want to bore you to death with uh, how you do all these little tricks. I do, however, want to tell, especially the beginning barbers. I mean, the more experienced ones are probably at this point like, oh yeah, nice, I can do that, perfect, good. Now, for the beginners, this is the trick you gotta learn. Just go free, free hand, clipper on zero. This is literally the technique I use the most on every haircut because all the hairs that jump out, you can take away free hand. This is really how you can draw into your cut. Taking out weight, taking out those little jumpy hairs. If there is one trick that is my favorite, it's absolutely this one. Yeah? Gonna show you another one though. Now I know a lot of people go like, oh my God, blending scissors, blah, blah, blah. Now, I want you to know, I do not ever, ever, ever use these to thin the hair. Yeah, if you um, work as an artist or a craftsman and, and you get to know your material better and better, everybody will tell you, like if you're a sculptor and you work with marble, right? Or you work with wood, you're a wood carver. Yeah, you always start with the basic shape. You start with a chunk of wood or, or a big piece of marble. You start by chopping away the big pieces to find the statue or whatever you want to make out of your material, right? And the closer you get to your final result, the more subtle your tools are going to be. For me, it's pretty much the same, right? So I took away a lot of bulk, a lot of hair, 
with my normal scissors and clippers, but now I kind of want to go into the details. Now, by taking away that weight here on top, by pulling it together with my normal scissors, what I'm going to do now is, like this. Here. No, I'm going to, yeah. yeah. See, what you can do is this, taking a normal scissor out, and then you can look for a section. Like this, no. or? Not licht Mm -hmm. Ja, je moet naar het licht draaien. Wie ik, zo? Ja, want ik moet toch zo filmen? Zo. Ja. Zo. Zo? Ja. Ah, got it. Zo, so, normaal. <laughs> ja, die anderhalve meter lukt lekker. <laughs> ja? See, normally you can take your normal scissors. Ja, and look for the line you want to cut. Right? Go in. And then look for your next section. Yeah, which pretty much is the same as taking a section in your hair, lifting it up, looking for the line. But I think once you've dried the hair, you should not pull on it anymore too much, right? So the moment you take it between your fingers, hello? Hi. The moment. <laughs> <laughs> the moment you, you, you pull the hair between your fingers, you're going to take natural wave out. Now, I don't want to take natural wave out. I want to work with the hair the way the hair is. So what I'm going to do is, I kind of want to flow through that cut. So by using my blending scissors, I'm going to kind of blend that wave, blend that shape, yeah, by moving slow while using my scissors in a fast manner. So I'm really gonna, <coughs> and again, this works so much easier on, on real, real humans. Sorry about that, Dick. Yeah, so you're gonna lock, you're gonna lock your arms, you're gonna lock your body, elbows and shoulders into the shape of the cut. Are you gonna see it like this? No, I have to send like this. And you have to send, oh, okay, see? So I'm going over, yeah? Lock my body into the shape of the cut. Lock my body in the shape of the cut. <laughs> and I'm gonna polish the whole shaping, see? And then you get this super nice, <coughs> flow into your cut. I think you see the result the best from this side, right? See? Now that's really pretty, right? Going from long to short on the crown area. Yeah? Nice pompadour. This, this, you, could, this you could easily work into a teddy boy kind of rockabilly quiv. Yeah, a lot of length to play with. Ietsje meer die kant is dat een beetje weinig ruimte. Ja, maar ik denk... Uh, so, that is basically uh, how I do uh, things. I'm gonna clean up the other side. But I don't want to turn this into... I really thought it was only working for 30 minutes. So, um... Time flies when you're having fun. Exactly. See, by keeping length in that nape area, you're gonna have that nice DA, yeah? Remember when I pulled all the hair to the sides? Yeah, that's why I got these nice, longer, heavy panels that are gonna flow in. An area yeah okay I'm gonna try to speed it up but uh, if I've learned one thing is the moment I say I'm speeding shit up I usually go slower
I have never met anybody in my life with a neckline like this. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Going a little shorter. Again, please. <laughs> oh man, X. There you go. Now, normally, I would probably go on for an hour and a half. But... I think most of you will understand the technique that I used here to get to this point. Using my blenders just to go through my lines. You can check for excess weight. See, so go through. Use different blending techniques to accentuate your DA, make your lines flow. Uh, schat, wil jij even het licht aan doen hier? Daar zo met die. Uh... Die zit op de boekenkast boven. Boven, naast de bank. It's really weird to do this from home, uh, peoples. Does it help? He's dead. 
So, um, okay, last trick, because it's my trick, but it's probably not going to work because Dick's hat's going to fall off. <laughs> Dick hat's going to fall off. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> but what I normally do is I use my hands and my... Wait a minute, I'm going to grab it with my monkey. <laughs> 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 so what I'm going to do here is take all that see, take all that hair and blend it in just with my fingers I really love well, especially on human hair it's going to get some extra texture and by following the shape of the skull Really get that nice blend through. Okay. Now honestly, I found this about a million times harder than, than cutting hair on a human model. So I have to say from now on, I highly respect everybody that does those perfect haircuts on the mannequins. I now know, I mean it's a little weird because somehow it's it's in a weird way it's even easier i guess because the shape of the skull is like like perfect but i kind of miss i miss that 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 quirkiness of, of of normal hair i find that hard normally it's that little extra wave that gives the haircut that unique feeling to it, but all in all, not too shabby, this was kind of fun. Now, I know there's probably a lot of experts out there that know um, what product to use on one of these. I have no idea. Can I put in oil-based product? What are people saying? Nobody knows. Tick tock, tick tock. Okay, well, I'm gonna. I don't know either. You know what? I'm just gonna. See, I brought some of my favorites here. I really want. You know what? People saying go for it. Huh? I'm gonna mix a little bit of the blue. I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen, but uh, we're just going to give it a shot. People saying, of course, yes. Fiber has been used, clay. Oh, yeah? Cream, pink. Oh, can I use... Oh, by the way, still saying a little. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the 
that smells really good. Although it might be the pasta that's cooking. <laughs> no, this smells, smells super nice. The blue and the red is a nice combo. Both easy to wash out. I think the, the red might just be the most uh, the popular uh, a pomade in the Russo range. Although I have to say that the extreme matte hold is doing really, really good worldwide. We get a lot of reviews on that one. But the most important thing is, see, if you have a if if you're doing a haircut on a client, yeah, remember there is never one client in your chair. There is always five potential clients in your chair, right? So make sure that when you do a haircut, try to make the hair to be as easy to groom for your client as home as possible. Now, I hope that you guys can tell, right, that I put a lot of effort in the shape of the cut, yeah? So, I want the cut, I want the cut to do the work. If you need a product, should never be needed to make a haircut look good. A product should only be used to make the hair look even better. Yeah, because the moment a client is gonna leave your shop looking his absolute best, that is beautiful, that is really good for the name of your shop. That is really like a walk-in um, uh, advertisement. Advertisement, walk-in advertisement. But again, if your client Elbow cannot work. reproduce that haircut, the next day when he comes out of the vet, it is a shitty haircut. But if you give him a perfect cut, and he's and you. Because I get it, you don't want to be a salesman, and that is fine, that is not why I went into this business. But I think it's your duty, your absolute duty, to advise a client, right? I mean, if I get a, a tattoo somewhere, yeah, I love the tattoo, but I need to know what the aftercare is. A tattoo artist has to tell me, you gotta keep it greasy, you gotta keep it red, blah, blah, blah. I don't know, I'm not a tattoo, well, I obviously know now, but, um, you know what I mean? So when you advise your client, yeah, make sure that he leaves your shop with the right product yeah, for his hair. And then the next day, if you did a good job on your haircut and he's gonna use the product you advised him, yeah, what is gonna happen? He's gonna blame your product. Yeah, and that is what you want because you do not want to put some of your artwork, if, if you put so much love and energy into your artwork, you do not want somebody to go home and put a terrible frame around it. And that is what the wrong product is gonna do. It's not gonna complement your haircut. And that's what you want a product to do, complement your work. So, now, I am sure that the next time I cut a mannequin, because now I know a little bit more how it works, but for the first ha mannequin I ever cut in my life, well, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that can do better, and, and, and you know what? I really want to learn, but it's not bad, right, Dick? What do you think? I want to check in a mirror. Oh. <laughs> I haven't seen myself in an hour. Whoa, Dick, Woo! look at that. Looking so fresh. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> You've helped me so much. Here's Dick, by the way. So, um, there you go. This was the live demo. Um, I, got, I, I hope you guys had a little bit of fun. Here's Dick, honey. What do you think of Dick? Hey, Corey, Dick. 
Yeah, great dick. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Um, <laughs> um, again, ladies, gentlemen, whoever is watching, this was not a class. Yeah. This was to make you guys feel good while being at home. I know a lot of people are worried about the future. About I'm I'm really really worried too. So um, I really hope that I brought a little fucking ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. Yeah, it's not just about the car. I mean, it's a nice cut and everything, but um, stay safe, people. And most of all, stay nice to each other. Be careful. Stay inside. Don't spread this fucker around. You know, we can do this together. I'm, I'm really sure about that. If you had fun, I promise you I'm going to do another one. Yeah? In a couple of days. Just let me know. Uh, I will read in the comments later. Maybe you're going to be like, oh my god, Rob, you don't know how to do a haircut. I am the first to agree. I found it really, really hard to do this. But Dick is happy. And that's what it's all about, man. A happy client. Dick, thank you so much. It's so good. Thank you so much for cutting my hair. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna end with uh, you know uh, I don't know what the English expression is, but good luck in times to come. Yeah, we chose the most beautiful job in the world, and our clients are out there waiting for us. And I actually think when I see what people are already doing for each other, I hope this is gonna turn the world around a little bit, you know, take the positive out of it. This was Rob, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you guys soon. Mwah, mwah, love, and everything. Thanks, Dick. Mwah.